All right, welcome to the beginner tutorial for the Unreal Engine 5 for lighting and camera work and cinematography. And if you haven't seen the first uh, chapter of this Unreal Engine beginner tutorial for lighting and scene setup for the, this shot here, the Nightmare Before Christmas, then I highly recommend, of course, watching my first um, video tutorial to that in which I was going over the project settings and the plugins and how to input and load the models to your Unreal Engine editor. So, but now we continue basically this uh, Unreal Engine beginner tutorial for lighting and cinematography. And the first thing what I'm going to do is I add another directional light and when you do that you will notice there is immediately like a message popping up uh, that we have here a problem and this problem is that uh, for especially for the volumetric fog we need to specify the priority of the different lights so and if you type in here priority and set this to one then this will disappear because you give this now the priority number one versus the directional light we have also here in the sun and sky environment okay so when i go into this directional light um, the first thing i do is i change this also to movable and as you can see i have here also the the light intensity i can regulate and also when you press G, you also see here this uh, white arrow. And the white arrow indicates basically the direction of this light. And as you also can see, the volumetric lighting information works already wonderful. You can see it here on the moon. Um, and you would also see it very nicely, I think, here on the tree. Yeah, very nice to see where you can see the volumetric light is actually working pretty well and pretty nice already uh, with the environment uh, exponential height fog. Again, uh, what I showed in the first video, don't forget if you haven't seen this yet, select your exponential height fog and make sure volumetric fog is turned on. So that's the, the most important step. Then here in the albedo map, uh, you can now control really the color and pick a color of your choice where you feel like, okay, this is getting um, into that mood what you're shooting for, right? So this is very important. Now for the directional light, what I'm usually also doing is like, as you can see, I make sure that I have somewhere a key light that is interesting. When I'm saying interesting, I mean like most of the time those shots are either like really backlit or very harsh lit, harsh shadows and very dark with a strong key light and strong shadows. And of course you could pull up now reference images uh, from the original movie, etc. Um, but I think in this particular case, it's more like also whatever you prefer and go free floating like with the style you really prefer and, and you really like. And I just go through really quickly the, the lights I'm using and the idea of what I'm looking at when I'm setting up uh, shots like this um, to make it look interesting, right? So usually, as you can see here, I have then one key light and that key light is literally just responsible for like where everything is illuminated or like lit um, from one key light and source light. And on top of that, what I usually do uh, is I place then a lot of point lights. So the reason why I do this is, for example, if I pull up here point light, the first thing I also do here is always set it to movable because I do not use with lumen and so any any light baking etc i want to have everything in real time and when we use here uh, lumen 
then basically everything is dynamic lit. Okay. So, but what you can also see here is you could with a point light change also the shadow softness uh, by changing the source radius. So if you change the source radius to let's say a hundred, uh, this would give you a very, very soft shadow. Of course, because we are shooting here very, very dark, you wouldn't actually see a lot of this. But for this particular shot, I want to keep it actually pretty sharp, the shadows. And I mean, 10 is already more soft and you can use something like this. Um, source radios, yeah. The at attenuation radios, if I say it correctly, I think easier for me to say as a non uh, English uh, native speaker is fall off. Okay. So it's basically, you can see here the blue line, uh, the blue radius, and that's basically how far this light is actually influencing your environment. So if you make this now stronger, say I make this 50, you can clearly see as wider and bigger that radius is, right? As wider this light is influencing the shot. Now I keep this usually also very, very tight and close to objects I want to uh, light. And what I do here is I'm trying to generate just some basic lighting information so that you can see some shape definition and some forms. So for instance, this cross here, right? You can definitely see um, anyways, like the geometry has a lot of issues everywhere. So I'm not quite sure if you go to wireframe now we wouldn't see that but the geometry here right as you can see we have lots of crazy low poly faceted i don't know i would call it issues actually but again the purpose of this beginner tutorial for the unreal engine here is not about modeling it's not about using high resolution meshes it's just all about lighting and getting some scene shots and and look development done and the mood right and then working on some camera but as you can see i place some lights here that i can get on the top of this cross kind of like a shape definition that you can read the cross nicer and then it's very clear for you if you make a shot because you see that form and that shape oh it's kind of like a cross and that's kind of like a graveyard here okay so what i also do is then when you see the pumpkins everywhere by clicking alt and dragging it out you duplicate this light i create then also uh, more orange lights but that's also just like you know whatever you like that's your style and so and and then i position those lights like either way close to the pumpkins or inside of the pumpkins but I do fill, I, I really fill up this place quite a lot with those um, spotlights, uh, sorry, point lights, because it gives me overall a really nice mood. And as you can see here, some shots like this, uh, it, it can look really very, very interesting once we apply then also uh, the cinematic camera and we are shooting wide open, have a lot of depth of field also applied to it. Okay, so this is this uh, stuff, of course, here. Of course, like in order to do your lighting and to do your lighting job well, you need to spend a little bit of time and place everywhere the lights where you feel like, oh, that would be great um, for a shot. This would be a nice idea. And I need some key lights here. I need a rim light here. So that's totally up to your style. Um, what's next? Usually also what I do is I use a spotlight and when you drag out the spotlight, it's the same principles. I set it automatically or immediately to movable. And then when you look at the spotlight as well, you have a few other options here, of course, um, that you can influence and you have an inner cone and you have an outer cone. So that also determines how sharp the shadow is basically casted and you also have still source radios 
And that also helps, of course, like if the source radius is bigger, the shadow is softer. Intensity, of course, we spoke about it and the fall off. And now you can see by pressing G, right? You can already see, uh -huh, there is a light that is now hitting Jack from the bottom. And, you know, this is not really up to you how you would like to set him into scene. And of course, if you have a light coming from the bottom, it's very dramatic. So when you see this shot here already, it's pretty cool because you see also the shadow that's going to be casted uh, on his chin here, right? Coming from below, it's kind of like already promising, look, looking promising. And as you can see, as more lights as you add, you see really this impact of this atmospheric, of the atmospheric effects here working in real time. And that's why I really like the Unreal Engine to work with for look development because you get instant feedback in real time. And yes, by the way, in the project settings, this is all by default Lumen. Um, and I'm not using any retracing because it's really not needed for that. Um, of course, retraced reflections and so on or retraced global illum illumination could give you some better results. Uh, but in this particular case, and for lighting and look development and, and mood creation, it's absolutely not necessary and it goes super quick. You see also here the performance. I'm having 110 frames, something like this. And yeah, uh, it goes very, very quick. So I was making some um, additional, you know, uh, adjustments on the lighting. So I was placing, I was adding just more point lights, as you can see here. I made some color changes. When you see here the exponential height fog and you go to volumetrics, then you can see that I was changing um, a little bit the albedo color and I just set up everything with properties that I feel like okay this looks like what I like okay so it's like your own style whatever you choose and whatever you pick you also see I brought in uh, some other free assets here I was downloading also from Sketchfab from other artists but you find all the credits from these artists of course below in the description and I'm very thankful to have this provided from them as well that we can actually move on and build something for the nightmare before Christmas very fast. And also this is a scan as a scanned asset as you can see in the three different parts. But I was just slamming some stuff together. So now one thing I wanted to show you uh, as a next step is I think this is quite interesting is you see this little fog right that is running around and crawling here you see that and i got a lot of questions already in some other videos i created where artists ask me bernard how could we actually do something like this do we need a particle system system or anything else and yes i built also particle systems but in this case i was just using a card so it's a plane and I show you then also what I did with the material that you can um, influence the way you like it with uh, uh, a procedural noise texture map and then you just project that to the plane and that looks really I think like pretty cool also in the final shots um, it has limitations of course because if you have now a camera and you want to fly through this if you hit the plane as you can see here and go through the plane the fog is gone because now you are behind this plane right and you might see some harsher lines on the on the ground here you see where the plane is hitting also the ground element but that's kind of like the nature of using cards it's an old trick you might know also from after effects or like if you have been using v-ray before max where you put just some noise modifiers on this plane so uh, you see it here, if I go on the lit and wireframe, 
see here this massive card it's just a plane and when you select it um, then you see here I named this plane fog and there is my instanced material I created and I don't want to go too much into the material creation because this is an Unreal Engine beginner tutorial but um, you know you can control here the speed so currently it's at 0 0.05 but I could you know crank up the speed and make it 10 or something like this and then if you go into the editor you see like how much faster uh, this actually moves so right now at 1 this is pretty fast and turbulent already right so I put it back to 0 0.05 so it's like a mist kind of like fog and, and mist that's you know floating uh, in in the atmosphere so to speak now the parent material I just show you here a snippet how I built it is already a little bit more complex and that's why I don't want to get any further into the details here because it's a beginner tutorial but as I mentioned if you would like to have also this uh, procedural shader and the card you can download the entire project file and everything is provided within this project file and you can use it for all the other projects then of course as well um, and I think it's very helpful to see the the level and the project file so you can actually see how I was assembling and setting up um, that level and these shots so that's basically the basic of lighting and using here this fog card with the material and then showing also these assets and what I, I also want to point out is these assets like I said before because it's a beginner tutorial for like you know look development of course for a final version these assets would not qualify because they're like very faceted and it's great to use them also for like um, you know previous and and yeah basically getting a look development done but it really depends you see like for instance this check model is pretty nicely done it's low poly um, but very thoughtful crafted so it really depends but of course because it's a beginner Unreal Engine tutorial I'm not uh, showing you how to model or sculpt something in detail in this tutorial but uh, I will show you if you're interested also a simplified version of how to create like uh, for instance tombstones like this one but really nice ones and uh, how we can build that in ZBrush with all the high details the high fidelity details and the beautiful thing about using the Unreal Engine is also that you can uh, export millions of polygons. You wouldn't even need to op super hyper optimize the meshes anymore and unwrap them and model from low poly to high poly because the Unreal Engine supports Nanite. And it's quite impressive that you can skip a lot of those things. And if you understand also like uh, poly painting, um, you know then you also wouldn't need to unwrap the mesh anymore and if you understand how to use like curvature maps or AO maps you can create pretty realistic um, texture maps on the vert with the vertex color itself and then you also wouldn't need to go through this all the other process all right so this is it for now again if you find this useful and if you like it uh, I'm creating of course more tutorials about cinematography, lighting, shading, rendering, using the Unreal Engine, especially also for beginners. And yeah, um, if you think this is useful, hit the subscribe button and you'll get notified when I will release my next tutorial. But we are for sure not done yet. And again, you can download this project file uh, from the link below in my description. Or if you go to my website, Fedible. Dot com. So the next part in the next chapter is talking about the sequencer, using the sequencer and adding some cameras and yeah, then 
let's jump straight into this other chapter. Thanks for watching and see you in, in my next video tutorial. See something strange Come with us and you will see This our town of Halloween This is Halloween This is Halloween Pumpkin scream in the dead of night This is Halloween Everybody make a scene Trick or treat Tell the neighbors come and die of fright It's our town Everybody scream In this town of Halloween I am the one hiding under your bed Teeth ground sharp and eyes glowing red. I am the one hiding under your stairs. Fingers like snakes and spiders in my hair. This is Halloween. This is 